computer. Okay. Um, so we are, I'm just going to say the date is July 21st, 2022, and we're office hours for the OSU PDC Pro Spring 2022. Hi, Emily. Hey. Um, and we're just talking ecological succession and how do you figure out where you're at, what, like what each stage looks like, and know that there's not like a central database that you can go to and find out what it is for your site. So I was just telling Sid that like, you know, basically just looking at like what's been most recently disturbed, what's coming up there, what's been, you know, kind of at it, you know, had longer and has more of like a functioning nutrient cycle. So basically each, each successional stage is laying the groundwork, establishing a nutrient and a water cycle to allow the next stage to occur. So it's really like a stepwise process. So, um, and then I cut Sid off to hit record. So, um, oh yes, with the, the fire regime. So the fire management is that, so on the one hand, like, yes, that fire, that type of fire management is required like to keep certain species you know, functioning either like the heat, you know, is what allows the seeds to germinate or the seeds to be released from cones, you know, different, you know, to maintain those patterns. On the other hand, there's sort of, there's another perspective of like, basically that some of the systems that we see now are what manage to survive that, that type of fire regime. So, you know, you can look back to like oak woodland and there's a lot of like, like vernal pool stuff and that's, like that might actually be part of the ecological history and that could potentially be a sort of like alternative climax, climax forest or climax stage, like a late successional stage, really depending on like what happens with the management or what's happened with the management in the past. So like none of these systems are like, you know, they go from like A to B to C to D, you know, every single you know every single time or under every context there's always like ways that we're, and this is why we're we're doing permaculture we're doing like regenerative management is because we really get to make choices early on to derive like you know what direction that ends up in so it could end up as like a late you know, late stage forest it could also you know we could even put in the work potentially to like work with climate and stuff to drive it more back towards like a you know wetland or like a grassland cycle Okay, okay. Does that helps. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, cool. And then I had a question about the uh, local food chain slide that was there. And basically, the decomposers, the earthworms, and stuff like that. That's basically that's also standard. There's no way for me to find out what special species I have on my. Those will be the standard fungi, the bacteria, the earthworms are. You oh, you okay. could um no I mean bacteria bacteria have not so much you could find you could do some um looking into some specific mushroom species so what kind okay. of like mycology you could expect okay start developing over time okay. um you could do you could actually get some specific earthworm species oh, um find out what earthworm species um I mean like. Do I, I just you know what? Yes. Um, just I just made an educated guess. Like oh, I think it's this one. Oh, okay. Like well, okay. you can yeah. I mean, you can do so here. Um, I'll drop the link. Earthworm ecology in California, Ooh. Berkeley. When in doubt, just Google your question. What earthworm species are in California? Oh, um, just spell it. See, I always start searching Palomar Mountain, my small region, and I don't get a lot of data. So basically, what we're looking at Southern California, or California, that scale would be fine. Yeah, yeah, you know, things, yeah, things like Earth. You know, there's a lot of things that are going to be like ubiquitous. I mean, you might come up with like some endemic species that's like endemic to your region or endemic to Southern California. Okay. But yeah, definitely broaden your search from like just your specific, you know, your specific site, wow. and then you might start narrowing it down. Like, oh, there's actually like a this is like a. Uh, specific floristic region you know there's there's you know there's like a coastal california flora and fauna that are very specific to certain areas right okay um, yeah so like a yeah. piece of mountain okay yeah yeah so we kind of start broader and work in rather than starting just with palomar and, and working out yeah. um, i just wanted to see if there's any questions that went into the document I don't think so. It looks like the last time I looked at this, it was. Okay. 
Okay. Old questions. Yes. Okay. So we talked about yours. So this is we are on to we are assignment eight questions now. No, we are still assignment seven questions, aren't we? The pre what we are talking about was assignment seven. Now. Yes. This week is assignment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm on assignment. Behind. You're fine. Um. Or endemic. Yeah. Species for food chain. Yeah. So start start broader, but um. Yeah. There's your earthworm ecology site. Um. Yeah, and it you know it takes some like poking around. Sometimes you'll find something that that's just it's kind of like there's a saying in microbiology like everything is everywhere, and it's actually it's really debatable whether that's true. Like, are most bacteria found all over the world, or like kind of everywhere that you know everywhere that that particular environment is found, or are there really like specific species that are like very specific niche? And there's a bit of both. There's a lot of like generalists. Okay. Uh, so I wouldn't go as far as like looking for specific bacterial species in that food chain example. Okay. For sure, you could find some specific, some mushrooms that are specific like to that region. And they'd be, so you're looking for like saprophytic um, mushrooms, so saprophytic fungi. Um, I, you know, you'll find earthworms that are, you look at that site, I haven't done a lot of digging into it, but you'll find a few. Yeah, I, that the earthworm. I thought uh, iPhone will tell me what earthworm is. I dug up one. I couldn't oh. tell you. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, it, you, you very well might be able to get an idea on it. Um, let me yeah, check another another really good another really good service is um, bugguide.net. Um, I just want to see. I don't know. I I don't know if they. Just do arthropods. Let me see words. Earthworms. Mm, no, not much. Oh, arthropoda, hexapoda. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so if you search in bug guide, you can get there's like a, a comment thread. On earthworms. And I'm just picking earthworms because you 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 shared that example, but really anything. Um, what's the other one? You, you thread on earthworms. On on Google or was there another site you said? Uh, it's no, it's bugguide.net. So bugguide.net is great if you have like an insect or a you know oh. insect or spider. Or I don't know if they would do worms, but you could probably get a referral to somewhere else. And you can basically post your photos, some stuff about like where you found it, what time, like what conditions. And there's usually somebody that'll be able to identify it for you. That's nice. It's a really cool service. Yeah, it's just like a whole bunch of bug bees. Yeah, I um, see many bugs here. Like, yeah. I've never seen before in my life. Right, yeah, so you'll have a lot of cool stuff down there. Um, another comment, like for thinking of this food chain thing is that if you find like general information, because like another decomposer would be wood lice. I don't know that there's specific species of wood lice, but you might find some, but I mean, you could use that as a generalist, or if you, you might find something that there's like a California wood lice. Oh, okay. Lane, do you know if there's any species that are specific to California? <laughs> I don't know. Wood lice. <laughs> he also doesn't know, so. Yeah. I have um, a lot of those uh, earwigs, but I don't know if they are any deep. Composed. They're predators. Yeah, they're, they're predators. Sow yeah. bugs. Yeah, so the sow bugs, pill bugs, roly polies, um, wood lice are all the same. And Spons. they, yes. yeah. Yeah, so they're, and they're, they break, basically like break down woody materials. Right. Okay. okay. Um, I'm just going to send a babysitter message. We had a, a friend who's like, the sow bugs are eating my garden. I'm like, no, no, they're not. <laughs> Oh, actually, they may be because the thing they eat they eat besides wood is little plants. Oh, do they? We have a big problem with them here. Yeah, they like oh. our plant our when they start I thought to germinate. They only ate the decaying matter. No, unfortunately oh. not. No, they'll nip. Out. We've had stuff that comes up and they just like they just poke out and they get the two little leaves and then they get nipped off. And we've actually caught them. Lane actually caught them at, at night in the act. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a lot of these on the picture. I'm looking at Starbucks. Looks like my garden is full of these. But in the soil, yeah. there's something else, I think. They're in the mine are usually well, in the soil. Yeah, I mean, if you want to take a look, you can you can always like run it through a sifter to get all the dirt out. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of stuff you'll be able to see with your naked eye when you start worrying about like bacteria and and like microscopic fungi and stuff. I mean, it's all, that's really interesting route to go when you start getting into nematodes and things. But um, yeah, just for like for basic, you know, bugs, just start learning what's out there, and what's what's close to you, and then figuring out. Like start at a higher level. Don't look for species, but like look, figure out like what order they're in. You know what family kind of go down from there. You can yeah, you can just get like you know some insect field guides from the library to get started. But um, okay, perfect. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Does that does that set you on the right track for? Yes, yes, it does. Very helpful. Okay, thank you. And how your site cross section looks? This is yours, right? This yeah, uh, yeah, I have the old slide is in there as well, just for reference. But my slide yeah, is. this looks great. Okay, so you're you're on this right track there for sure. Cool. Yeah, so you're not too far out. You're not far out. You're good. Yeah. Okay. Um, Emily, what you got? How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Um, I the plant system design. So the first slide is goals high level and then the next slide is the proposed plan so is that where we're identifying plants we want to add in those areas <laughs> yes Because um, one of the things I want to do on, I mean, my, it's, the template is great, don't get me wrong, but my site's so small that it doesn't feel like I need to, you know, dive into another piece. And then the other thing is we want to move a, a fence. So should I start doing that for this or just leave it there? I'm like, how, how, um, when you say like you want to move a fence, how likely is it like an 80% that yes, that fence is going to get moved? It's a 100% like that's a high priority. Is it a, it's a high priority. I We're hoping the HOA will, if they don't immediately, will at least have a conversation and be like, oh, okay, well, you can move it to here. Um, the homeowners, they want to take it all the way to the road. And I'm like, I don't think the HOA is going to go for that. But I think if you. Okay pushed it out and left like two or three feet along the road, then they would go for it, so. Okay, um, I mean, for the purposes of this, you could go, you kind of have to make a judgment call. So, okay. you know, as a designer, like, you know, if you put yourself you know, in the shoes of being a consultant for this, you could, I would design based on like your best guess or your best recommendation. And then, you know, don't, you know, not to slow you down in the course, but if you're actually doing it for a client, I would probably add like one or two options, like say, you know, they're, they're like an interim plan, like we're going to plant first while the fence is still in place and nothing's changed. But with the thought in mind that that fence is probably going to move and then maybe like a client's best case scenario so that you could actually present that to the HOA and be like, hey, look, if we put the fence where they actually want it, we can do this. And that, you know, and then incorporate some benefits or something to the HOA. If you can do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a lot of this is like, okay, like like you just kind of have to make a choice about what you're going to present and share and then just like run with that. And you can always do a contingency. You know, if you're actually doing it for a client on a paid job, then you could always do it at a contingency plan or some alternative. And then the following slide with the plant system is a plant is a cross section of the proposed previous slide, right? Is that yeah, okay. yeah. This assignment is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. There's a lot of pieces to it's this a lot. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah.
And then the, the plant species matrix, is that the same? Is that just the plant? We can use the plants that we put above, right? That's the idea? Yeah. So that's just more information on where they're identified. Okay. Yeah. So it's more details about like, you know, yeah, how you're, you know, thinking about rooting depth and, you know, and, and crown heights and stuff and how they're actually going to interact. Whereas like, rather than just like plunking them onto the slide. Okay. Well, it was, it was just interesting watching the video. It was like, well, we're going to have you start thinking about it. And then it's like, no, you're putting the design. And I'm like, wait a minute, are we, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of that there's a, a definite like kind of staggered of like, oh, you're thinking about it. Oh, now you're doing it. Oh, you're thinking about it. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Well, I had to go back to the beginning and be like, okay, what are we doing? <laughs> mm. Like it's been so much fun researching all this information, but now it's like, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, and it is tough because there's a lot of there's so much of, of design in this context is circular. You know, you keep going yeah. back to like what you you know what you learned in the past. Like we were Sid and I were talking about you know looking back at like indigenous land management. Like it's like, well, what did it look like when they were you know when it was being managed pre colonization? You know, so yeah, mm -hmm. and context of the client too. Like, what plants are you going to choose? What things do they really like? You know what's actually going to grow here you know kind of venn diagrams right like what's going to grow here what yeah. do they actually like yeah yeah unfortunately well, it's usually like what do they actually like what's going to grow here <laughs> like when we're in yeah. yeah well and it was interesting learning about the the um what was it called the the species that have been you know sort of specialized in this area and it's like gosh i wonder how because i know when i go to the nursery it's you know i mean they mostly come from this area, but the, a lot of the distributors distribute all of, you know, Northern California. So it's like where we yeah. are compared to the Bay Area is very different. Very different. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate because like you really, you really do have to get picky about what nurseries you work with. And sometimes it'll be like a nursery is really good for like one thing or one area. Um, but then like, you know, they just like, they're not like, like things like stone fruit. You know, you can have on the tag that it's like low chill hours or it's like, you know, drought, drought tolerant and stuff. And it's like, yeah, drought to tolerant in Sonoma County is very different from drought tolerant in San Diego. So, yeah, potentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it looks like you're on the right track here. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at yours and looking at your plant. Yeah, no, this all looks great. Yep, yep. Fun. Anything else? How do you do the, how do you do the cross section of these plants? Just like I see the example, they have a very pull up. find out from the internet like what the plant looks like, the trees, the cross section slide. Yeah, I just want to make sure I'm looking at the There's template. There's the slide that has a bunch of um, images that you can grab. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Sweet cherry polyculture, that slide and start the cherry tree, how it looks so. Oh, it's not yeah. exactly cherry tree, spread, but basically the size and proportion and get it from. Okay, okay, yeah. that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, and this, you know, this would be another good, really good spot to see, go and see what other students have done. Um, yeah, I've been looking at Emily's slides every time I get stuck. Uh, <laughs> don't look I, at mine for the cross section. There okay. are better ones out there. But um, Emily, Emily is doing awesome work. following slide, all of those little images on, um, it was slide 97, um, you can pull those so you don't have to go Okay. There's yeah, a, I, I do yeah. remember. Yes, there were those outline images. I can pick those. Up. Okay, but yeah, but they're not specific to cherry, sweet cherry exactly. They're just that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and also, not in any way to knock Emily's awesome work. <laughs> um, Rebecca Archer is also doing is doing some really cool stuff, and I'm I'm recommending actually all three of you at various points. Um. Gabrielle has done some cool stuff. She kind of dropped off the map, which is a bummer because she was doing some really great work. 
Yeah, I've been looking at Rebecca as, as well, Jack. Like I have those Emily's and her on one side, on one side. Yeah. I can go back and refer if I get stuck if I have a question. Perfect. Um, I'm just looking at the resource. Yes. Okay, this is what I wanted, the sample student reports. Um, yeah, so I'm just, I can drop this in. But yeah, make sure you're looking at um, presentations that are already finished because yes, they've I, gone through like the whole final. Right? Uh, I was, a few weeks back, I was looking at, there's a list of uh, completed presentations somewhere on the course, right? Yeah, and yeah, well, each just dropped a link. Oh, yeah, yeah, for each oh, yeah, assignment, yeah. for each assignment, they've okay. got. Um, yes. Uh, um, a previous, like a student report, um, specifically select. I believe they're specifically selected for as a, as an example for that section. Um, I would have to go and see how much like overlap, like some, maybe they just kept a few that were just like all over awesome. But my understanding was that they selected a few that are like, oh, they're really strong in this area. Oh, I did not know about that. I just knew there were like Ooh, three okay. or four reports that they had, but I looked at it. Okay. Yeah, no, every, sorry. I'm, I'm learning what I should, I should really preload like knowledge I should really preload students with because um, yeah, every every assignment in this assignment resources, there's a uh, uh, there's a link to previous students like sample reports. So it's always at the bottom of it's in, in the student resources. Perfect. Oh, I'm trying to find this. Here we go. This so Interesting. This is not. I'm surprised they chose this as an example to be on. Like honestly, uh, like where you guys are at is is actually much better. <laughs> um, let's see what this one's got. I'll share it when I if I find something I really like, I'll share it and, and show you. Um, my internet's really slow right now. Where do you see the in the assignment resources in? So if I look at lesson seven assignment, and then under assignment resources, you see. Yeah, let me just let me at just the share. Very bottom, there's click this link for examples of these sample student reports. Yeah, I'm going to share this just so that it in the video. Um, yeah, okay. So here I've navigated through the discussions into lesson eight assignments. Okay. Um, and then under assignment resources, go down and click this link to see examples of the assignment. So if you click here, it'll take you to a new tab or a new page, pardon me. Um, and then you can click on each of these. And so these are the I've, same for, I think, for every time I see. I've got, pardon me? I think so. I think they're I the hope, same four that I've seen yeah. every time because I will, okay. Okay, I'm kind of getting that impression too because the first one that I opened up, I was like, this is not something I would have used an example for this section. But. Okay, no, I think, yeah, I've seen these. I went through all this and I was especially on okay. the Ohio one, I would pay, I was paying a little bit more attention because okay. the similarity Canada one was, their reference of documents and data database is very different from what we have in the US. They have a different oh. database. Oh, this might be, this looks like it was, um, their table of contents was actually modified so the links are broken. Let's see what we got. Okay. You have waiting, waiting. Okay. This is what I was expecting to see. Okay, so this is plant system design. You know, laying out what's you know what's getting planted where. Um, existing conditions. This is the proposed plan. So they're just showing, kind of highlighting a specific planting around here. Um, just. 
I I don't know if this is I don't think this is coming from the template. Let me see the template. I because I would not. Oh. Yeah, for so what for abbreviations, what I use based on the internet, what is it? Um Designers, oh, United Designers International. So Dan Halsey's group, um, they use, let's see, oh, annotate, here we go. I would type something. So um, they would use an acronym like, so for Douglas Fir, Sudotuga, Menzizii, they would use PS and E. Um, Acer, macro, Macrofilum, they'd use AC and A. So basically you end up with very, very few plants that will have the same acronym. Whereas mm -hmm. here, what they've had to do here, they've got like P dot M and then A dot M A because somewhere else there's probably an A dot M like, oh yeah, AM Achillean millifolium. It just gets really confusing. Um, so this is what I use, this four letter acronym. It, I found it works really well. And if you start doing more of this work, you can, create your library in like Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer, which is what I use. Um, and then anytime you want to plug that plant into a design, you're just looking up the acronym. You know what it is because you've got the Latin name. You just plug it over. You don't have to like, yeah, I, it, I just find it's a really clean and it's always a four letter code. So if like you're putting it into a spreadsheet, you know, your column is like four letter, four characters wide. It's really nice and clean. It just, yeah, that, so I'm, just a comment here, just noting how they used abbreviations. If you want to use a really easy, like standard format for abbreviations, I, I like this four letter system. Uh, but other than like that, looks this is a really nice layout. It looks really clean. It's really easy to read and understand. Um, oh, I'm clear. Right. And then, Sorry, I said, what was that? What was the website you said? Is United Designers. United Designers International. He's got actually some really great YouTube videos. If you look up um, just Dan Halsey, or I think probably under UDI. Um, and they have a, they have a digital um, design program that you can go through that really teaches you like like digital design. It's not, you know, oh, you can use paper if you want. It's really like strong digital design skills, but they also have a, a lot of YouTube videos that you can. Um, okay, I want to go back to this one. So here's, oh. Okay. Sorry, go ahead, go ahead first. So here's the cross section. Right. You know, it's not a cross section of the whole property necessarily, it's just like pick, you know, and they kind of picked a critical point where they're making a berm um what they're going to do there what they're going to plant so you can see like what that is going to end up looking like um yeah they just did one so i'm guess my guess is the i have not gone through the lecture the videos the ass assignment the uh, videos i have not gone through but there would be some information there about where and what kind of plants i'm placing like how am I coming up with the list of plants that I'm putting and where they are? Okay, so in, in those videos, I mean, they might incidentally have a reference that's suitable not for, for your where site. you live. <laughs> yeah, not probably not for where you live. So that's okay. the thing, that, and that's where going back to the initial stuff about understanding your specific biome, your site conditions, your climatic conditions. Uh, this is where, like, P, um, I also want to say P flag, and I'm like, it's not P flag. <laughs> P flag is something different. Um, the plant plant data. Plant database, yes. Yeah, yeah they have the access to the plant database. Yeah, there's the plant plant database. There's also um, this other one. Oh. PFAF, plants for a future. Um, yeah, so the Natural Capital Plant Database, PFAP is a good one, Desert Food Forest. So, you know, you can look up those, you know, for what's going to be suitable for your site. So say like the temperate climate you might have a few that are like incidentally. Let's look it up. Um, you know, um, 
appropriate for your site, but it's more likely that this could be like Vermont, you know, Canadian stuff. Like, you know, people kind of vary what they call temperate. Like, like a Mediterranean climate is is technically temperate, but it's so borderline like subtropical. Um, I'm trying to see anything that like really would grow down. You wouldn't do down. Yeah, so this isn't too bad. Like, you know, like so your cherries, you have a, we have a hard time finding like cherries with enough chill hours down here. So you know, you'd want to really make sure you're getting the right variety. Ditto for like apple. Yeah, so you know, willow, and only if you've got a really good supply of water, obviously. <laughs> So that kind of thing, like just make sure that you're looking at plants specific to your, you know, that are going to work in your climate. So know your USDA hardiness zone. You know, you're looking at plants that are probably going to be more drought tolerant, possibly very likely more saline tolerant, um, you know, or, or alkaline soils. So stuff that does well for your site. And so you're basically, I mean, you can sift through things, but like the the natural capital plant database you know you can select by zone you can select by like certain qualities of those plants and then you'll you know you'll just start narrowing down the list i mean right okay um like mm -hmm. i made a, a spreadsheet well it's more of actually a database for a client in north dakota and i think i downloaded some it was on the order of like 30 different spreadsheets from natural capital plant database there's a lot of overlap and so then you're picking out like unique species. I think we whittled it down to like 120 different plant species for berries, you know, from like food, fuel, fiber, like all the different uses that she could use for her site. But there were some that it was like, oh, they said that was, you know, that was going to work in Minnesota, but it's not going to work in North Dakota. Or that, you know, that's gonna, like, there was some crossover, but it just wasn't going to work on her site because they don't, you know, the way their like climatic conditions or soil conditions and stuff. Okay. That help? Yeah, yeah. So that and the placement, there would be so. So from what I understand, talking to my neighbors when I'm trying to decide what plants to put and where. So we have these years when we have some certain years we have when we have a lot of frost days, and then certain years we don't have enough frost days. And there are yes. certain plants that need minimum number of frost days and stuff like that. Yeah. So, one of the strategies I was talking to my neighbor was, since I have these microclimate, kind of microclimates, but like certain warmer and colder, if each of these species that I really want, the plants that I really, the fruits that I really want, I plant one each in two different microclimates. So in certain season when it's not very cold here, it's getting that cold there. And so when it's too cold, it's not getting below. So yeah. is that, can that strategy work? Yeah. So I can do that. Yeah, it can. It can. I mean, it can fail, but it can also work. I mean, we're all an experiment. We're all experimenters, right? Right. It may well work. You may, you know, it, it's a context thing too, right? I mean, you may decide to just go, you know, go really like kind of tough love and not water things like in a really dry year, not water things that you know are going to need a little more water to survive. See if they make it through. If they make it through, then that might be, you know, that might be a good thing. You might choose to just water them to, to like to really make sure that you get them through, even if they're a little more dependent. So it's all like, you know, what can I manage to do right now? What am I going to, you know, am I going to manage? Am I managing this for like just for the next five years to get me through to the next stage? Or is this something that I want to you know, commit to doing, you know, long term? You know. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it could work. It could very well work. Or you could, you know, you could find that it works a little bit. But like, hey, if I, you know, this is in like a cooler, shadier microclimate, um, and it's doing really, you know, plant, you know, the. If you've got two plants, same species, same variety, whatever, you put one in like site A because it's cooler and shadier, one because it's more got more direct sun, and you find that like plant A in the cool shady spot is actually just going like gangbusters way better, and the one that's in direct sun is like is lagging. 
you could do that you could like oh you've got you're trying to find a place to put up your new garden shed you could stick your garden shed up to provide like another cool shady microclimate you could dig that plant up and move it to a different you know so these are all choices you can make as you go along I mean, we've been here, Lane's been here for 10, 10 some years. I've been here for six and we're constantly adapting things. Like we move stuff from one site, you know, a tree that was planted that's obviously struggling in one spot, we'll try it in another spot. And you can do that up to a point, like with a, you know, five or 10 year old tree, it's, it gets too impossible, but. Um, but like in two or three years, can you move a fruit tree in two or three years? Some, sometimes yeah. you can, yeah. Do it in the Especially fall. In the fall, do it in the fall, yes. And yeah. especially if they're really struggling, they often have, it's they're often struggling because they haven't put out a big root system. You know, if they've got a good strong root system, then they're gonna be doing, they're yeah, more they're likely to be doing well. Okay. So if they're struggling already, you're probably gonna lose it. So you don't, okay. you know, you don't sacrifice a lot. Like we did that with a lemon verbena that we had out front. My mother-in-law, I guess, had put it in the front, the front walkway where it was like completely shaded by the house almost all day long it never got any sun and it was like this little like scraggly <laughs> stick right so we're probably like well it's ugly it's, it gets in the way it hangs over the sidewalk so we dug it up and put it back you know like in full almost full sun by one of our little seating benches well now we have like a lemon verbena tree wow. in like three years after we moved it so That's you you know you could get rid yeah you could get lucky you could it could just kind of even out but yeah, having having options is always good. I mean, always planning for something, always growing. That's like, you know, and having a couple different varieties. Yeah. You know, just starting to build in those overlaps of your production is great. And then too, as those trees get bigger, it's gonna things are gonna shift again. Yes. Yes, absolutely. They create they start creating more shade, they start creating more litter. Yeah. More opportunities, more birds, more yeah. Hmm. I have another question similar to Emily's sure. question, but so I, I have two, so I have a cottage right now, but the main house at some point will be built. And that's, so what I want to design is mainly on my fruit trees and stuff. I want to design on the, around the future house. Should I go ahead and with my design do that? Because that is yeah. where, yeah. Okay. You might as yeah, you might as well because if you know the house, you know for sure the house is going to be there, and that's a, a make sure that's a well situated site for a house. I mean, I, you you bought it with the graded spot, yes. right? Yes. So make sure they actually did their due diligence in making in putting that site there. I mean, it could be saving you a bunch of money and time and and headache and stuff in the short term. Like, oh, you've already got a building site, we'll put the house there. Make sure that's actually the right place to put the house, like for sun oh, yeah. exposure. For yeah, okay, you don't. Right. Yes, yes. I was. I, that wasn't even my first preference, even though it was built. I started with another side, but this came out to be. This is the for top side in terms of all considering everything. For for building, building the house. For for yeah, building the house. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Even if it wasn't graded already, that's okay. where I would build. Yeah. perfect yeah so then i would definitely design around that, around that. keeping yeah. in mind that if you're going to need to have like construction equipment or like lumber moving up you know right. you'll oh, either yeah. need to protect things or have to you know be able to move around them but, so i'd probably start with a bigger circle you know give yourself yeah. lots of room around the building site and plan to work okay. inwards um, okay. but i think the next the next assignment is after big. the plant one is the zone one design which is yeah. going to be you know, around your, your site, around around the house. Okay. Well, you guys are almost done. Absolutely. It's coming. I remember when we started and then I like one day scrolled forward and was like, oh my God, there's a lot of stuff. There there's a lot, lot of stuff. stuff. <laughs> there's a lot I'm of really stuff. really going to fill out all this information. <laughs> yeah, I need to just do it piece by piece. You know, and, and that's the thing is like you guys are you guys show up pretty much. I mean, I think you've been on every call, the calls that I've showed up to. Thank you. Um, you know, um, you're doing a great job. You're getting like plenty of detail in. So you're fine. I'm not worried. I'm definitely not concerned. I think you guys are doing it just like you're really putting the effort in, putting the time to understand what's going on. So. I mean, I, you know, I look back at like 
permaculture designs I did like years ago and I'm like, oh man, it's so like, it's either so basic or it's like just stuff I didn't know. And it's like, what you don't know, you don't know. And then you learn, so. Yeah. But we will have access to all the, the entire course, even after we finish, right? We'll be able to all those links and we'll be able to log in or, or not. Do I need to copy all those links and everything stored somewhere? Or? I, you know, I can't tell you offhand what. Okay. Yeah, that would be Whether, really cool to know because I've been like, every now and then I'm like, oh, I should copy that. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm never going to be able to find all this information again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, It'd I be will... interesting to know, if, do we keep, get, do we stay, like what we have access to in Canva, is that like forever or? Yeah, I will ask. Yeah, that would be really useful because my plan um, is I will be able to spend more time in the winter time on this project than I'm right now with the work on the site. So winter time, I'll do the full course kind of again every week put myself into doing things. Yeah, I, honestly, because it's hosted on the university, you know, through the university and on Canva, I would really make yourselves copies of, okay. you know, or bookmark, um, go to the original yeah. website, you know, for resources you want and then bookmark them into folders. Yeah. Um, keep, you, you know, keep any examples of, of projects that you want to refer back to. You know, you could like, you could even create a long form document or something to kind of keep track of what you're you're using. But I would plan that you won't necessarily have forever access because it's a university thing. Like if you're, you know, you're, um, I guess you don't have a university email as a student, do you? No, we don't. You don't. Okay. So it's an, it's an, uh, oh, right. Cause it's the adult ed, the pace continuing that. Um, I will ask them, but I would I would kind of just to err on the safe side. I would plan that you don't. Okay. Yeah, I think, and we'll need this like not only just like in a few months, but yeah, I'm I'm sure that you will like in. I I guess I would just say I would plan that you don't, but don't like, don't be anxious about it before the end of the course. You're not going to lose access like at you know at the end of the course. Okay, yeah. but I could see yeah. like in a year or two or something like, you know, okay. whatever, if they go to a different platform, they're not necessarily going to migrate your accents, that sort of thing. True. True. Okay, yeah, so I have, I'll have some time. Okay. Yeah, but certainly that's a question that's been answered before, so I'll make sure we get that answer for you. Yeah. Okay, I have a call at two o'clock, so if you guys don't have any other questions. Or do you? No, I'm good. No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Sid. Just keep plugging away at it. Look at that. Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a great afternoon. You too. Talk soon. You too. Bye. Bye.